What's poppin' YouTube? Welcome back. We're here with more Internet Historian. This time we're checking out Too Fancy, Too Furious Wine. And uh, myself, I don't really know wines too, too well. I only knew them from back when I was waitressing and bartending, but even then at the bar, no one really ordered wine that often. Most of the time I was serving like drafts. And even then, I wasn't really that much of a wine drinker in my whole life, but... Today we're getting educated, so let's get straight into it, but hey, before we get started, you know the vibes, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below to feed the algorithm quads, and check us out live over on Twitch, I stream every single day at Alicia X Life. You're currently watching Alicia X Death, watch Alicia X Life over on Twitch, and check out the description below for the link to the original video. Alright, let's get it. Yay, react! Come here, little fella. Hi! I want to tell you a secret. Okay! I'm just like you. Oh! Nice. We're both down here in the dirt. Oh. Mine just happens to be imported. Oh. You are fighting in traffic. Okay. And I am fighting charges of trafficking. We're so similar. You're... <laughs> oh. Oh. That doesn't feel very similar. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're working a nine-to-five job, and I... I'm having to look at that. And I'm having to look at We're that. We're both going through it. <laughs> so don't hate me. I'm not the problem. It's the wine snobs. They're the ones that look down on you. <laughs> Ain't no way we use the vulture in this. And frankly, I don't blame him. What? Uh. <gasps> no, no, he's learning. Listen, let me pull you up by your bootstraps. Okay. <laughs> what if I made you my little pygmalion? That's a <laughs> reference that you wouldn't get. I'm so sorry. You know sad. what? Perhaps I shall make a series of videos that will give you some sort of clue about fancy things. <laughs> yes, that's what I'll do. I feel so I feel so ashamed and embarrassed for I'm uncultured. Something to give you just enough information to bluff your way through a fancy dinner. Did you know that Dan Vinci painted the Mona Lisa? Somebody had to hold open the gates for the barbarians. Why not me? So let's do it. Let's look at... Oh. Why? Why? The Mountain Dew of upper society. <laughs> not the Mountain Dew of upper society. Ah, oh, hell no. Nah. As gamers, we understand, though. The finest of cuisines and beverages. <laughs> With wine, there is only one rule. Kill or be killed. What? <laughs> Wait, what? And if you want to survive the night, here are six things you should know about wine. Okay. What are they? To you muggles, the words on these bottles must seem like a mystery. Pie, not no iron. <laughs> but us I want to die. <laughs> I want to die. Can I get a pie, not no wire? <laughs> Hell yeah, fella. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. We, the pink Himalayan salt of the earth, we know what they mean. They are grape names. Look upon this grape vine. It makes grape berries. Now, there are many different species of grape Fancy. berry. And whatever the berry species is will determine the type of wine. This is Chardonnay, so it will make Chardonnay. Merlot grapes, they make Merlot wine. Grape names are mostly French. Gross. But for example, in English, means black pine. Because it kind of looks like Ain't a no way he said that. <laughs> they're, they're mostly French names. Gross. Anyways, moving on. Like, damn, bitch. All right, <laughs> buddy. Okay, if you squint. Here's some of the other names. You can pause it. I'm busy. Wine grapes are not like the kind you get at the supermarket. Oh, no, pause it. We already Those know. Those are table right? grapes. You can think of it kind of like the difference between cooking chocolate and regular chocolate. You can eat them. Ugh. But they're overly sugary and kind of full of seeds and just not as nice to snack on. Yep. So the grape type is the main word on the bottle. But sometimes there are other words as well. For example, this Borgogni. What the hell is a chablis? It's all regions. Allow me to explain. Through I did not know this. 
I knew the other shit. I did not know this. <laughs> I know that they would tell me, like, where something is imported from, and they would give me, like, descriptions to say when serving. But I didn't know it was on the fucking bottle in, like, a way that, like, was coherent. <laughs> I thought it was just a bunch of... You know what? I'm... It's hard, man. The medium of song. There's TNT and P Bonnet. Also, there's Burgundy. Don't forget Chablis. <laughs> so the one person says you're in a French country and you're kind of offended. Find better things to be offended about. I'm gonna be honest with you, buddy. <laughs> nah. <laughs> this ain't it, chief. Find, find different battles, homie. <laughs> like, this one ain't worth it. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh, Animaniacs! <gasps> yeah, with the country's one! Bordeaux. This one's from Italy, this one's from Italy, this one's from France, this one's from France, this one's from France, this one's from France. This, this, they're all from France. We're <laughs> Italy. Okay. Look, the general rule is, if you see a term you don't understand, it's probably just the French or the Italians being all la-di-da about their particular region. All right, let's move on to price. <laughs> the Come walking animation's so good. Ah, we're here. I can tell by the name on the sign. Now, don't <laughs> embarrass me, I didn't bring my ID. Okay. Fiddle TD, look at all these bottles. So many options. Wow. Ooh, a cheeky $200 bottle. I would like to take the $8 bottle of wine. I am not a classy broad. I will take the cheapest shit you've got. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and here, oh, a $20 bottle. Now, I bet this $200 bottle tastes way better, right? Like, it's got to be 10 times better than this one. Probably not. That's just basic math. No. <laughs> Go on, though. You choose one. I'm going to choose the Shiraz. Uh, no. <laughs> well, it was supposed to be a trick question, but uh, they both <laughs> taste pretty similar, right? There's not some threshold that you get to where it gets more expensive, and then it tastes better. And then Listen, I'm just a piece of shit. <laughs> I just... I literally I, mm -mm. And more expensive again and it tastes even better until it gets so expensive oh, and Jesus. so incredible that it's like nothing you've ever had before. Break through the condition. This is But the thing is that I don't got like you know how people like when they do wine testing, like wine tasting? Like I've done a wine and cheese pairing tasting party before and like everyone like swishes it around to get the aroma and they smell it and they sip and they spit into a bucket. I was like, disgusting. What the fuck? And then me and my friends, we just drank it. We were like. <laughs> <laughs> they got cheeses. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't that deep for us. Because, <laughs> like, they have, like, I just can't, bro. <laughs> just old grape juice. Now, if you're a little bi-curious about a more expensive bottle. <laughs> bi-curious. Sure, why not? <laughs> Gold letters grace the label, hand engraved by goldsmiths. Famed wine critics described the taste as mind boggling. But realistically, after about. Yeah, the most fun there, promise. You know what, honestly? Do you know why they spit it out? I, do, I, I, I genuinely don't know, but also, I'm not in a tax bracket high enough to care. <laughs> well, you don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? My my tax bracket's not high enough for me to want to care about that. If I paid money to go somewhere and I already got a designated driver or an Uber, I'm chilling. You know what I mean? Like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, I'll be like, tastes like wine to me. <laughs> Except for like, I don't know, sometimes like some Chardonnays are fucking dry as a bitch. You know, like, I mean, like, I know like little things for what I prefer. So I'm not like that uncultured, but I'm like pretty uncultured. About $60, the flavor doesn't get much better. In fact, it plateaus out and it can even go down. The best quality to price ratio is all the way over here, much lower, about 20 bucks. That's how much you should spend on a bottle of wine. Now, hmm. some people will say that I'm putting my heart and soul into this thing. I'm making an art a form of art. How much is that worth? How much is art worth? Zero dollars. <laughs> Zero. We do not appreciate your passions. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, unless you're making big titty anime women, 
That I will pay 100 to 300 bones for. Okay. I, for drinks, for beverages, fuck that. <laughs> Hell no. Anime titty is eternal. <laughs> Drink consumed is temporary. Am I wrong? Plus twos in the chat if you agree. I'm right. I know I'm right. About so, uh, first is not to get drunk. Seconds to avoid mixing the taste of the mouth. Oh, but they oh, but they have like shit on the side when you're sampling. They have like palate cleansers for you. So I guess it might just be the drunk thing then, because when we when we were there, they had palate cleansers. So I don't know. Sorry, someone just brought up the fact about like why people spit out their wine during taste testing. Twenty bucks. Ah, but what about the Ventage? <laughs> Whoa, look at this. I hate this motherfucker when he pronounces things. I love it. Uh, like, oh yeah, I always have to cr tell people this. When I say I hate something, but I'm laughing, it means I love it. That's how I work. So I'm like, oh my god, I hate that shit. I'm just, like giggling. It means I love it. Just start to understand me, please. If you're going to stick around this channel, you need to you just start to understand me. Thank you. A couple of cromulent slender necks. And they're the Slender same necks. as well. Mm. But this one is from 2019, and this one is from 2022. Well, surely the older one is the better one, right? No. Ah. Many people think that <laughs> wine aging goes like this. I just... I, I love it so much. <laughs> Bad, stupid plebeian. And the flavor just keeps getting better over time. Wrong, wrong, wrong. The wine at the store has already been aged at the winery. I don't need to be more aged by sitting on this shelf and just collecting dust. Or spending years at the back of your pantry at home. If I'm for sale, I'm ready to be consumed. Oh. I'm ready to have your hot lips wrapped around me. In fact, the general rule goes a cold red to be drunk within... <laughs> Five years and a cap. I drink a pothic red. <laughs> to the point where I knew the cork. <laughs> That's uh Yep, not that expensive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming to my twenty dollar bottle of wine TED Talk. <laughs> Within one year. Come come, there's more. Let's pretend I am a waiter at a restaurant. Okay. You happen to be wearing a shirt. And so I have mistaken you as a paying customer. As a waiter, I'm the first you. thing I will press you about will be food pairings. White wine with fish? A merlot with pork? <laughs> well, kid, I'm going to have to pair this truth nugget <laughs> truth with something nugget. you don't want to hear. Uh-oh. The food pairing doesn't really matter. It's all completely subjective. Okay, but for food pairings at the restaurants I worked at, would be like the chef decides what they think the best pairing is with it. So I think that when it comes to that, I think it's viable. I think having generalized versions is cringe. But if your chef is like, I made this, I know what I want to pair with it because that's what I think is good for your palate. Like, I'll agree with that, you know? So like, even if like I had a chef that was like, yo, pair that with red wine when normally you wouldn't. I'd be like, okay, like that's their dish, right? Merlot with the cheeseburger, W. That's how it's done. Actually, I, I have a lot of friends who are super into beer and like craft beers and craft ales and all that shit. I really don't, I don't like it. I'm not a fan, but there was this one oat citrus beer I had at this like specialized brewery in Toronto and holy shit, it was good. I have no idea what the name is because <laughs> I was drunk off my ass by the time we got to it. <laughs> Unlucky. <laughs> it's cuisine by horoscope. It's food astrology. Pay no attention. But I'm a Virgo. So I'm, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Well, I am a Virgo, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> the sommeliers in the comment section, they are bullshitting to upsell. Uh, get the more expensive one. It goes better with the spaghetti. Or. Was that what I was doing the whole time? I had the number one alcohol sales when I was a server. So, like, my boss would always put me in on the heaviest, craziest shifts. 
to squeeze the most cash out of people. So, like, <laughs> fuck, <laughs> you know? They are a Pisces, and you shouldn't trust their opinion anyway. Oh. Something else to expect <laughs> at a restaurant? Expect to get ripped off by the markup. Most restaurants oh, well, yeah. pay 250 to 300% markup on their wine. Okay, but that's actually normal for most restaurants. Because even for food costs, your food costs and drink costs are going to be 25 to 33% of how much the actual pricing is. So that's just normal. Just a heads up. Okay. <laughs> and the cheaper the bottle, the higher the proportional markup tends to be. That's so why a certain restaurants, bottle. though, also have it so that there's a corking fee. So, like, you can bring your own wine, and then there's a corking fee to uncork it for you, because you're not allowed to uncork it yourself. Yeah. And they'll just charge you for that instead. But, like, there's, like, different options you can have. Just depends on the place. It just... it. If you go like casual fine dining or casual, they won't really have that option, but it just depends on we'll how you go. into an $80 bottle, but a $100 bottle may earn... 33 times that 33%. No, 33% of the price of what you're paying for. So for example, if I went and sat down at a restaurant and I got a meal, 33% of whatever I just purchased is the food cost. They're only making a 66% profit. And even then, gross sale. You know what I mean? So you got to also consider the fact that they have to pay their workers. They have to pay everything else off. Yeah, that's how it works. In a chain, a chain is very different. Like going to fine dining versus chain, the, the pricing difference is insane. That is where you get to like, oh, it costs like 25 cents for blah, blah, blah. Versus when you're in fine dining where it's like, that costs you literally $10 to make that dish. You're going to charge like 40 bucks minimum. And even then, it's probably just a side. <laughs> it's probably not even actually like the main food. <laughs> but yeah. Only rise to 150. Most people get the second cheapest bottle on the menu, regardless of the pairing, and that'll do just fine. And that's it. No more tips. Unless you want to leave me one. Oh. Uh, actually, you know what? I got a fucking tip for you, mate. Uh, Ad time. I thought he was gonna. I thought he was gonna say his dick. <laughs> I bet you're wondering how I got this cog in my knee. His cog uh, in his knees. Uh, uh, that's because I became the face of Incogni, the service that helps you be forgotten on the internet. Oh shit! I used to be a humble florist. One day we received a shipment of forget me nots, <laughs> but inexplicably I fell in. And ate a bunch of <laughs> Don't forget me nots, bro. <laughs> I forgot everything that day. My address, my web browsing habits, where I worked, what my child's face looked like. I was supposed to pick him up from daycare, so that was kind of embarrassing. I just picked one of the kids that, that kind of looks like me. Oui, monsieur. Close enough. Have you ever signed up for some dodgy website? Have you ever uh -huh. dodged up for a legitimate website and they sell all your details on to a dodgy website? That's where I come in. Incogni man. Okay. And a nonna boy. <laughs> there are data miners out there, data collectors, creating big servers all around the world. They take your name, your address, and your IP, and together they make a big profile, and that lives forever. I am here to send them annoying legal. No yeah, I mean, <laughs> W. I, I know that there's this service, and there's one that I use, but I forgot what the one I use is. I used it because a YouTuber's, like, suggested it, and I was like, sick. Notices <laughs> to tell him oh, to big stretch. fuck off. Take Steve off your database. European law this. American law that. Go to incogni.com slash internet store to get... 60% Did he just kidnap a French plan. kid? Don't worry about it. <gasps> the worry about your own self. <laughs> I swoop into the data centers. Legal notice. Tangle up their processes with admin. Who are you? I don't know. <laughs> so oh, wait a minute. Ingenokni Nam. Go to incognito. Ingenokni <laughs> man. Ah, incogni man. Remember me? I was wondering about Nord. Yes. No. <laughs> no. Who's the kid? Je suis très enfermé, monsieur, s'il vous plaît. That's a good deal. 
Bad over. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Welcome to the wine underground. We have our meetings here because it stays at a very pleasant temperature. You know, us wine masons, we control everything. Uh, an actually cool fun fact that I don't know if you guys know about is like in the catacombs of France and in catacombs in general where you'd like have your family like buried together, uh, they would actually have wine cooling storages in there as well. So, fun fact, deep underground. A lot of corpses, a lot of partying. <laughs> we are few, but many. That doesn't make sense. Look at the back of this bottle. See the No Fat Chicks logo? <laughs> we put that there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you shut your boogity ass up. <laughs> it is the symbol of our organization. Stop it! We have a dirty finger in every glass of government and corporation stuff. If you cross us, whoops, perhaps you'll have a little accident. Last year, Little Upstart tried to make wine actually taste good. You know, like how grape soda does. Oh. Cut him up so good he had to get stitches. Ooh, the grape one surgery. We to try to dig around into our operation. We all know how that one ended. With an airstrike. All right, my little <laughs> juice box. I'm, oh, going to I'm a little juice box. A secret. Why is champagne called champagne? Well, I'll tell you. It all began in 1668. In the Abbey of St. Peter in northeast France, there's something spooky going on. Ghosts. It's springtime. And in the cellar where they keep all the wine. Yeah. Bottles would suddenly, unexpectedly, explode. Oh, Jesus! Now, this was especially common during morning mass. Ho, ho, that's a bad omen. Sometimes the explosions would cause little chain reactions, and bottle after bottle would break down the line, ruining the majority of the crop. The peasants were frightened and also parched. No! Sorry, Blue, lay wine. What is happening? The monks would refer to this as the devil's wine. Le wine is cursed. Le God, he must be anger at us. We need a hero. In walks Don Perignon. He is just the man for the job. Okay. A Benedictine monk at the abbey. He's got a new role, the cellar master. And it's his mission Damn. to find out what the hell is going on here. So Don starts looking at all the bottles. And what he figures out pretty quickly is that the wine itself is releasing gas. The gas builds up pressure and... Kablooey! Why that is happening, he doesn't know. But it's his job to stop it. Fair so enough. So he gets to work, trying all sorts of things to stop his mortal enemy. The bubbles. <laughs> In the first year, he tried insisting that only the youngest grapes be picked. Perhaps this will stop your bubbles. And it didn't. No. Right. The next year, he changed up how the grapes were pressed. Push harder. We'll squeeze out the bubbles. Son of a bitch. <laughs> he tried picking the grapes very early in the morning and no other time. Nope. And on and on. The bubbles would win the battle every year. Jeez, For six eight years? Long seven years? years? He tried all sorts eight? of different things. <laughs> and no strategy worked. No, no, the bubbles. Eventually, he was at the point of almost giving up. Until one day, hey, what if the wine is still fermenting? So he takes a couple of the bottles and he opens them. And, huh, it is. We ferment the wine. Once it's done, it goes into the bottle. How does it then start fermenting again? How is that possible? And here, the mystery was solved. So it turns out, in mm -hmm. North France, they have very fast-changing seasons. And owing to that, the yeast doesn't actually get time to do its job. Instead, it would get cold very quickly in the winter, and all the yeast would go dormant. Then the winemakers would go, oh, brilliant, fermentation slowed down, it must be done. They would then bottle it, and they would store it. But once summer came back around, they got the process would spring back to life. Oh. And carbon dioxide would build up, and... That's oh. actually super cool. Someone said fermenting rebellion is kind of crazy, but also God, that is that is that is so sick. 
I don't know any of this. I cannot change the climate. Perhaps I shall not win the war against the bubbles. Now, the bubbles are his enemy, and he has another enemy. Okay. The English. <laughs> Therefore, the enemy of his enemy or something. Anyway, he starts talking to the English, and he goes, Hey, how do you guys stop your bottles from exploding? And the British go, You what, my core? Well, <laughs> how thin the bloody glass be in it? Thin glass is the problem. Thank is that just not Steve? This test is that just not Steve from Tekken? <laughs> This dude, just if you shaved his face. <laughs> just a speech preview. For a paid version, please go to... See, the oh. English have created new coal-fired bottles with much thicker glass. Then they put a cork oh, in the thick. top, and it allows them to make very foamy beer. That's right. He could just use thicker bottles, and he won't have to worry about stopping the bubbles at all. <sighs> so Dom goes running back to France. He's panting. He's sweating. And there's bits of brie on his shirt. He's going, mm -hmm. better bottles, better bottles. Everyone's confused and terrified. But they give it a shot. And? Doesn't work. There it was. Oh, it does work. The people of oh, France love nice. it. I, I love this new style. Even the French royals were enjoying new wine TM. He even started adding extra yeast and sugar to really get the bubbles going. <laughs> And so Dom Perignon had created what we call today champagne. Now, there's a 19th century marketing campaign that says the moment he uncorked his champagne for the first time, he tried it and said, come quickly, come quickly, I am tasting the stars. <laughs> but that's actually a myth. That motherfucker was drunk off his ass if he said that. <laughs> he never really said that. Oh! But there's still a problem. And this one, Dom cannot fix. The pulp. If you bottle wine while it's still fermenting, so that you can keep the bubbles in. You're also trapping in a bunch of dead yeast and debris and gross particles too. Also, it's all cloudy. No, no, we want it clear. We want it crystal looking. How will we ever solve this problem? Dom dies. Oh man. 1805. Unlucky, oh, man. He couldn't see it to the end. Good for him though, for like at least problem solving. I'm Clico. By asking other She's people just outsourcing. the man for the job. I am also French. I have come to remove all the little beats. I will clench my teeth together and go pitu pitu back into the bottle. Pitu now, pitu! Clico was a very shrewd lady. Her husband died when she was in her early 20s. My husband is dead. Lol. And part of the estate <laughs> she was bequeathed <laughs> included a winery. She immediately got to work, making it into a successful business. I shall invent a process called lay riddling. Uh? Here's what you do, right? You put these bottles on a rack at a 35 degree angle with the top facing down. Okay. Every two days, she would give the bottle a little shake and slightly increase the angle. After eight to ten weeks, all of the sediment would come to rest in the neck of the bottle. Oh. Right, quick tangent. Did you know that when you increase the salt concentration in water, you can drop its temperature down much lower without it freezing? Tangent over. So she takes this sub-zero salt water and dips the neck of the bottle in there. Then lets it sit until the neck freezes. Now you have a sort of frozen cork filled with all of the gross pulp. That's And so then you simply pop off the top. And the whole thing goes shooting out as a fun prank for your friends and family. Then they add in a little more extra base wine and sugar and leave it to... That is so fucking cool! I... Dude... I, my mind is being blown. <laughs> the worst part is, is they might have told me some cool shit like this when I was doing that wine and cheese tasted thing. But I was not listening. <laughs> I, was, I was giggling my ass off drinking and eating cheeses, man. I was not even close to paying attention. <laughs> they had that motherfucker talking like crazy, too. I, nope. And with that, Clico <laughs> has just created a clear, sparkling wine. <laughs> and that is Riddley. Cool. And Madame Clico is the Riddler. Ooh. So Dom Perignon and Madame Clico are both credited as the godfather and godmother of Champagne. Nice. Today the Dom and Clique brands are owned by LVMH, the same parent company that owns Louis Vuitton, Tag Heuer, Tiffany & Co, Hennessy. Actually, pretty much every luxury brand. Which is cool because uh, this dude I'm pretty sure 
Elon Musk. Okay, yeah. He beat Elon Musk for being the richest person in the world temporarily. I don't know if he's still richer than Elon now. But when Elon got fucked over with the Twitter deal and everything and his stocks plummeted for Tesla because he went crazy, uh, this guy ended up from being second richest to uh, the guy who owns this, second richest to the most rich man in the, richest man in the world. And But why is it called champagne? Well, that's because it comes from the Champagne region, you dummy. Uh, and anything else with bubbles is just sparkling wine. Okay. End of part. Oh, it's you. Hi! I was just looking out over the sunset. You know how it is. Thinking about stuff that happened. Stuff. In the past. The past. I remember it all too well. Oh. It was literally 1984. 1984. I was walking home with my parents from the opera. Oh shit, he's Batman. Hey, <laughs> let's take a little shortcut. No, he he's said. Batman. We were walking down a well lit no! alleyway. It was nothing but quaint restaurants and bistros. Then suddenly, a man holding a bottle of Shiraz came out of nowhere. <laughs> a bottle Just of Shiraz. A tipple, he said. I was terrified. <laughs> I knew nothing about wine. Go on, he said. My hands were shaking, <laughs> knees weak, arms heavy. Mom's spaghetti. A complex aroma, oh. wouldn't you say? Ooh. Very good tannins. Oh, really? Yep. What's a tannin? <gasps> I don't know. Now my parents, my parents are dead. Died from embarrassment right there. They died from Stop. embarrassment is crazy. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Daddy. God damn. Just a tipple, tipple, tipple. It's too late for me, but I don't want the same thing to happen to you. Thank you. That's why we have to learn about how to serve wine. So you've bought a bottle of wine to show your friends and family how successful and sophisticated you are. Did you know that Da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa? So let's go through how to serve the big three. White, red, and champagne. Let's say you've bought champagne. <laughs> I'm genuinely scared to see if I've done any of this wrong. <laughs> I'm genuinely like here, like waiting in anticipation to see if I fucked this shit up when I was a waitress. I'm waiting. <laughs> that bottle goes in the fridge. Champagne is served cold always. To open, peel off the foil and do not aim it at your face. <laughs> then twist off the metal thing. If you want people to think you're fancy, use the proper word, musolet. Musolet. It helps to contain the pressure. Again, don't aim this thing at your face. <laughs> It's really Sorry, worth repeating. The PSI inside a champagne bottle is 70 to 90. That puts it in the same league as a nail gun. Oh, so the cork not comes American out Psycho. About 50 miles an hour. And if you're in a house, you want to hold onto it very firmly with your hand. If you're Bezos, or you just won the Grand Prix, fling it over some ladies. But if you want to be really fancy, you can use a sword. But think. This has been a tradition for a couple Never of years, that. <laughs> popularized by Napoleon. After each victory, the army would use their sabers to crack one open for the boys. Jesus. But the sword's just ceremonial. You can use pretty much any blunt object to knock off the top. A phone, a shoe, this fish head. If it's cold, it shouldn't Fucking fizz hell. over too much. But you might want to have someone on the side with a ready glass. The glass type should either be a tulip or a flute. Although, if you've seen The Great Gatsby, you may notice that they use these. Up until the mid-1900s, people used coupes. That's because, back in the day, excessive effervescence... I love that. It had to be rich for middle-class people. <laughs> ...wasn't very cool. So these cups helped actually dispel the bubbles faster. In fact, sometimes they'd even use a small whisk or a fork to dissipate all the bubbles. Now, there's actually an old myth that the shape and size of the coupe was molded from one of Marie Antoinette's boobos. But it's probably not true. <laughs> Shit, I'd sip on her titties, huh? What? <laughs> 
Eventually, bowls became a fancy <laughs> feature, so the flute was adopted. They can be made from glass, but preferably they're made from crystal, so that they shimmer as much as possible. And the best flutes would also feature a small rough spot right there at the center of the glass at the bottom to create a sort of tornado of bubbles. Anyway, as you pour, tilt sideways so it is an all head. And that thing in the middle is intentional? I thought we had faulty glasses. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I, I never knew that was intentional. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and don't pour more than two thirds full. Done. White wine. Yeah, I mean, I, I've White wine definitely poured into all that shit, right? So we're good. Too. We're chilling. 10 to 15 degrees, though. Not fridge cold. Yep. Use a small glass bowl and pour to about half full. And when you drink, do a little sniff test and, you know, aerate it a bit. Then hold it down low on the stem so your hands don't heat up the liquid. That's one taste, thing cut it with I always fucking hated. Is why I always see people, like, handling their wine glasses and, like, talking. And these motherfuckers would be handling their shits like this. And then they would complain to me about the temperature of the wine. I'm like, you fucking palmed your glass like an ape for the past 20 minutes, Martha. But yes, since the customer's always right, I will pour you another glass. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you want another eight ounce? Fine. Fuck it. Yeah, why not? Sure. Yeah, great. It's like, <laughs> so annoying. 50% <laughs> Sprite and add a few ice cubes. Reds. No, the reason why I'm mad about it is because it comes out of my money if they end up doing that with a fucking bottle. Like, I get fucked over, <laughs> okay? So it comes out of my tip money to cover it. So that's why it's piss off, dude. Like, there's like a certain amount that like they'll, the restaurant covers themselves in fine dining. It's like they won't, you, for, if it happens like once or twice a shift, it's whatever, it's not a big deal. But if it gets to like a larger amount, after a certain threshold, they make you pay out of your own pocket. So that's why it's like, Fuck, man. <laughs> Red wine is not chilled. It is served at room temperature. When you first open it, you're supposed to let it sit for a while to oxidize. That gives it more flavor. Although, if you don't want to wait, you can just pour it into a decanter. That does the same thing. To drink from, we want a... On a cool note, um, I had a waitress who worked so like alongside me a lot who would use that. I wouldn't use that, though. When you first I would open pour. It, you're supposed to let it sit for a while to oxidize. What I would do get... is I would like pop the cork and then you would like let like people have like a taste or a sample of the bottle if they want to, or you can let them have like like a smell of the aroma by doing that as well. So they can like decide on it or not, type of thing. So we'd have like a bottle prepared for that each night. Gives it more flavor. Although if you don't want to wait, you can just pour it into a decanter. Yeah. That does the same thing. To drink from, we want a big bowl on a stick. <laughs> so you get a full face of the aromas of the great blood. That motherfucker, what? <laughs> Jimmy, you good? <laughs> when you pour the thing, fill it about... My sister and I call it the goblet. <laughs> Whenever we pour wine for each other, when we're hanging out, we call it the goblet. And we just serve in this big-ass motherfucker. <laughs> One third full. That's pretty much it. However... When it comes to wine snobbery, red wine snobbery is at the top of the Maslow hierarchy. Okay. Fresh white rock. It's like almost like a rock quarry. Oh my god, shut up. And there's a taste testing thing that people do, and it'll go a bit mental, and it's kind of gross, and it looks dumb. But if you think you're ready, ready for the ultimate test, ready to take the one chip challenge of Oh, they're gonna do the stupid spit thing. He's gonna explain it. I don't think I was talking about. Well, I said, I just fucking drank it. I didn't give a shit. Technology. Then here's how you do it. When the waiter comes over, insist on taking a teensy sample. Inspect for color, clarity. Yeah, we, we did that, yeah. Legs refers to how viscous the wine is. Smell it. Mm. Smells like a red wine. Swirl it around on the table, making a loud scratching noise so that everyone knows you're a connoisseur. Swirling the wine glass is almost like turning up the volume on the stereo. When you taste it, you're supposed to get it over every part of your mouth so that when you brush your teeth later, it's awful. Then take in big sips of air. Yep. This is where you comment on the texture and taste. 
complex notes. No. You yell across the room. I now, hate this small focus. Part. You can just make shit up about vanilla smatterings or citrusy undercurrents. I swear, there's a hint of blueberry. It's I fucking hate <laughs> listening to people talk about that shit while you're standing there like a dumbass holding the bottle. Like, you're just sitting there like this, like... I still have a whole section to serve. But they, but they treat you like a fucking wine slave. <laughs> then there's always like the super chill customers who are like, do you know what I mean? There's like the super fucking rich ones who just don't give a shit. You ever met those kinds? The ones who are like, they have ex ex exuberant wealth, right? And what they do is they really don't give a fuck. They'll come in, in like a cozy sweater like, drink, get bottles of wine and just be, like, totally fucking vibed out. Not giving a shit. <laughs> and sometimes they'll order a bottle and they won't try it first and they'll not like it and they will still pay for it and not give a fuck. And, like, the policy is, like, oh, if they don't enjoy the bottle and they didn't sample, like, you can still, like, refund them for it. And they're like, no, it's cool. <laughs> we'll just get another. <laughs> like, and I'm like, okay, sick. <laughs> like, they got, like, fuck you, fuck me, fuck everybody kind of money. God damn. One of them in particular that I served, I'm not going to like drop which company it is because that's kind of fucked up, but like they owned like a chain of companies like throughout North America and they're my regular customers that came every second day, but they would always come Friday for their date night and I worked Friday nights. So they would always be like, oh, can we sit in like a Alicia section every time? And what, like I would hold their table reserved even if they didn't reserve it yet because I was like, I'm taking these motherfuckers no matter what. They tip so much. <laughs> I couldn't. There's like, and then it says I'm the regular. They gave me like a Christmas present of $500 one year. I was like, they're like, oh, in case we don't come back in time. Uh, here's your Christmas present. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> one of those things that's. Kinda true, but subjective enough that no one can really refute well, it. Mr. Beast. <laughs> so make a big show of it. There is a little bit of an earthiness, almost a graphite clay. Okay, don't say sign me up for a job there, because you don't know the other issues you deal with in fine dining, though. <laughs> like, there's people who think they're, like, all high and mighty, and then especially in front of their corporate friends, who will treat you like dog shit to look more powerful. Into like assert dominance. <laughs> it's fucking cringe. You either get like people who are super respectful and super sweet, or you get first time daters who are like they're on their first date because it's a fancy restaurant and the dude has no idea what the fuck to order. And I like wingman the hell out of them. I wingman them to high hell and them dudes be tipping hella high after because they're like, oh my god, this random bitch saved me. <laughs> you know? Like, gotta make sure we take care of the homies. They don't know what they're doing. They're they're in there for the first time. They're nervous about the pricing of the menu alone. They're like, how am I gonna pay for all this shit? Like, you gotta have them covered. Do this. It's a little bit meaty. It's a little bit sort of um uh, uh rustic. There are definitely hints here of Monster Ultra Sugar Free. <gasps> if I love Monster Ultra Sugar Free. And you're dozens of wines. You want to spit out the sample into this gross bucket so you don't get too drunk. Do not ask the waiter if you can drink from the bucket. <laughs> it's the waiter's pr <laughs> I've never been once asked that. <laughs> and he's very I've never actually had once had someone spit out their wine while te testing it, though. Every time, they've always drank it. The only time I've seen people spit it out was when I went to that wine and cheese pairing one, so... Also, what the fuck? <laughs> You're protective of it. And that is how to serve wine. I think people, though, when I was serving, would, would be too embarrassed to spit into a bucket or ask for a bucket. Because, like, if you're given a bucket, you'll do it. But if you're not given the bucket and you have to ask for it, you're going to look like a fucking hillbilly. <laughs> Can I get a spit bucket? Like, you don't look classy whatsoever. So you just taste it and go, oh, excellent. <laughs> Your bitch ass gets the fucking thing. Ugh. Okay, that's a lot of shitting on wine, people. And we shouldn't get bullied. But let me do a quick 180. Because okay. overall, wine is good. And a little wine snobbery can be good also. Being 
into wine is one of the great dad hobbies. One Moms are invited to. You'll have a model train set in your basement, complete with a little walking path and the grass just right. The best part about this hobby is building the thing, getting it just perfect, and then making people sit there while you explain the little trains in excruciating detail of how they work. I think once my fiance gets old as shit, He's 100% going to do shit like this. He's going to be one of those weird train dudes. <laughs> I feel it in my bones. He loves attention to detail. He loves putting things together. He's going to be one of those train motherfuckers for real. <laughs> I can tell. Because he got really into model now. trains. That's when you save up for the little space marine man. The equivalent of old train dudes. It's motherfuckers in their 30s playing Warhammer. That's the reality. We figured it out, boys. Holy shit. Take him out of the packet. You put on a podcast with some Warhammer in the background. Um, of all the Primarchs, Horus is the best kisser. And you slowly... Okay, but spot the lie in that sentence. Okay, fuck you. <laughs> Horse is the most interesting one. Fuck you. <laughs> Paint it yourself. And then you argue with your mates later about why the necrophiles are the best race. Necrophiles are incels. Thank you. <laughs> I've, I've discussed this previously in my Warhammer videos. If you have not watched them, I've talked about that. <laughs> and it's up to you to understand the context. And if you don't get it and you're offended, watch the video first. Necro I said necrophiles. The people who play Necrons are, are, and the Necrons themselves. I just copied exactly what he said. <laughs> I hate. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, listen, if they want to fuck the dead, let them be, okay? Listen. At least the incels are getting some. You feel me? Now they're no longer incels. <laughs> they're just weird and fucking figurines. <laughs> No, I fully believe in kink shaming. Don't get me wrong. I'm not one of those safe spaces where you're free from me roasting you. All right? I don't believe in that shit. If you're weird, I will make fun of you. But I will hear you out. People that spend like tens of thousands of dollars on coffee machines and equipment. And then it takes like an hour to make a coffee. And it's like My sisters are both those kinds of people. My sister are both. They're both like that. One of them has a full barista set up. The other one has like this insane espresso machine and milk steamer and all this other bullshit. Bro, no, stop. Get a Keurig. It's one button. It's a pod. Stop it. <laughs> it's like only 5% better maybe than the ones you get at the cafe. Now I could be Mr. Killjoy and come in and go, what's the point of that? Why not just buy it from the cafe? Why not just get a pre-painted space marine? Why not have someone else just install the train set? But then there's no ceremony. There's no fun. There's no hobby. Wine is very similar. The getting a little bit too obsessive about the thing and being like some lemon, lemon zest as well, lemon pith. Mm. The fuck so is lemon pith? <laughs> Tangy. Is the purpose of wine. It's the fun of wine, which is why wine is better than just some old grape juice. And you fucking wine loser snobs, you know what? You're all right. <laughs> That's cute at the end of the video. <laughs> I don't know, dog. Yeah, I guess everyone has different hobbies. I guess some people like frown upon gaming as well, right? People get too into gaming or min-maxing stats and shit like that. Some people like feel that way about that, but that's like, I guess I, guess I see his point for sure. Hmm. Pith is the white stuff between the skin and the lemon. Wow, I really learned a lot today, huh? Anyways, thanks for watching, YouTube. We'll catch you later. Thanks for all your love and support, always. And, uh, yeah, don't forget the subscribe button. Bye!